Good evening and welcome to another edition of the State of Business. I'm Nishani Pigera. Let's first take a look at tonight's headlines. Cabinet ratifies a new VAT amendment bill. And PUCSL introduces new measures to reduce electrocutions. Secretary to the Ministry of Commerce, TMK Thinakon, says retailers who sell essential goods at prices beyond the stipulated maximum prices will be dealt with legally. Addressing the media, he said around 85 retailers are rounded up for selling goods beyond stipulated prices on a daily basis. Thinakon also serves as the Secretary to the Ministerial Subcommittee of Cost of Living. ध्रव्यवलटू <laughs> Former Minister Bandalukunwadana predicts that the upcoming budget will be a challenging one for the government. Addressing the media, he also said the government is compelled to burden the masses to increase revenue in line with IMF conditions. Yatyantra Mulli Aramudali Kondesi Stagaran Raja Bendirain Palavani Kondesi at my Raja Adam Vadikaran Adam Vadikaran Nanga Vashim Badu Adam Ilanangantu Deka Raja Vedang Adukurantu Raja Vedang Adukuran Subasadana and Ikut Vedang Kaparin known Himanatam Pragdan Vedang Adukuran Tuna I wear Paratri Adumatamakatiagin I wear Paratri Adumatamakatiagin in Nanang Adam Vadivilla Vedam Aduin known Me Hameka Kim මේ තියනවට වඩා වැඩි පීඩනයක් අනාගතයි වැලේ කෙනින් එනවා ඒන්නේ ජාත්‍යන්තර මූල්‍ය අරමුදලින් බිලියන 1.5 ලබාගත් අවස්ථාවේදී අස්සම් කරපු ගිවිසුමට අනු The Government Medical Officers Association says they will strongly support the government's initiatives against tobacco and alcohol use. The GMOA conveyed this during a media conference in Colombo today. We know that uh, one of the main uh, component in the election manifesto of the last election was uh, prevention of tobacco, uh, reinforcing the existing laws regarding tobacco and alcohol. So uh, recently, His Excellency the President announced that he is going to submit a cabinet paper to increase the taxes regarding tobacco uh, product. So uh, the Government Medical Officers Association believe that the taxes regarding uh, tobacco should be increased and uh, we strongly stand for the stance of the government. In more news tonight, a leader of National Freedom Front, Vima Veeravansa, alleges that a number of schemes are underway to weaken the country politically. He said one such step is to write a new constitution for the country. Veeravansa expressed these views addressing a public forum in Colombo yesterday. The State of Business will return with more news after this short break. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching the State of Business. The Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka today announced the implementation of national standards for plugs and socket outlets in Sri Lanka for non-industrial applications. The PUCSL, the regulator of the electricity sector, said the initiative was introduced to improve the safety of electricity consumers. PUCSL data shows that in 2015, 95 incidents of electrocution were reported in Sri Lanka as against 73 cases in 2014 and 76 in 2013. 
Use of various substandard plugs, sockets, accessories, adapters and extensions have been identified as among the main reasons for electrocution and fire. From 2008 until 2012, we observed a rapid increase in electrocutions and it reached around 200 per annum by uh, year 2012. So uh, the Commission expects uh, this to be come down and uh, conducted a thorough awareness campaign in 2013, 2014 and 2015. And through that awareness campaign, we managed to bring down the uh, electrocutions to around 75 per annum. But last year, that's 2015, we again observed a slight increase in electrocutions. This means that the electrocution rate is increasing. We can curtail it through some awareness, but we need something beyond awareness to ensure we reach the international standards. That is uh, less than one electrocution per annum per million people. The Commission said that the Type G and socket outlet, widely known as the 13 ampere plug and socket outlet, commonly referred to as square pin plug and socket, will be the only national standards in the country. Whatever the socket outlet that we have already used in our houses in other places can remain as it is. So you don't need to change whatever the socket outlets that we use right now uh, in our houses and other uh, structures. And also we have done a study with experts from Nerd Center, the CECB, then Institute of Engineers and the Public Utilities Commission to find out the cost impact of uh, moving into this uh, new standards. But that expert committee came out with the conclusion that the new uh, standard is lower in cost than what we use right now, especially for households. Stocks close on a positive note. Let's take a look at the details after this short break. Welcome back to the show. Analysts say the trading at Columbus Stock Exchange ended in a positive note today. The all share price index gained 13.23 points to end at 6,508, while the S&P SL20 index rose by 8.86 to 3,590. Turnover was 323.7 million rupees, with 20.3 million shares changing hands. High net worth and institutional investor participation was witnessed in Chevron Lubricants Lanka, John Kills Holdings and Hatton National Bank, while retail interest was noted in John Kills Holdings Warrant 23 and First Capital Holdings. Meanwhile, foreigners remained active, closing as net buyers, mainly due to foreign purchases in John Kills Holdings and Chevron Lubricants. Up next are the day's forex rates. And that winds up the show for tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow at the same time. Until then, thank you for watching. Good night.